Hi guys, and welcome to the GMBN podcast. Now we have a bit of an announcement to make. This will be the third from final episode that is on YouTube. We're actually going to move away and just put it on your podcast streaming service of choice, be it Audible, Spotify, Apple, you name it, it's probably on there. So don't forget to subscribe on there too. Now this week's really cool. We talk about fashion with maybe the most fashionable man I know, Mr. Martin Ashton, as he stifles a laugh in the corner. It's a really fun chat, nice and humorous, and we um, just bandle through it and tackle some of the issues, be it mountain biking standards, social media, or energy drinks. Thanks for watching, and I hope you like it. So, is mountain biking just about fashion and trends? If we look at mountain biking, you know, what is mountain biking and how has it changed? Because are our bikes and the, everything from the clothing we wear and the protection, are they meeting the demand or are they sort of... Oh, know, uh, it's, a, it's muddy water, isn't it? Because there's a, there's a lot of both. Um, but I think if you look at it broadly, like let's just take this question broadly to start with, like is mountain biking just a fashion? I think there's a bit of an argument for a lot of the times... People use it as a fashionable thing to say, oh, I mountain bike. Like yeah. in that sense, I'm a mountain biker. What they're actually saying is, I've got a mountain bike in my garage that I never yes, use. No, that's potentially true. So yeah. there's, uh, and I'm guilty of that, by the way. Yeah. Um, so I think in that sense, you could argue it's a bit of a fashion, bit of a fashion statement. Do you think there's a certain, in regards to that, you know, it's like, you know, those Thrasher t-shirts, the skateboard yeah. brand? Yeah. I would love because it's a very fashionable t-shirt to wear, whether you even have any idea about skateboarding scene. And do you think, you know, there's a difference between, within that, what you were saying about having a mountain bike, do you think there's a difference between having a mountain bike and there's a certain threshold you have to pass before <laughs> becoming a mountain biker? Yeah, so what is mountain bike? So you're not a mountain biker until you've done a certain amount. Oh, I don't... So, I mean... Oh, maybe, yeah, I, yeah. Know, that, I don't know, I don't know, that'd be fair to say. Oh, I don't know. Because, I mean, you could clearly say... You're a mountain biker because you ride. You've probably ridden more in one session than most of us, most of us do in a year with but one of your endurance rides. I also love road cycling. I've done, I've done a lot of road cycling. So a lot of people say to me, but you're not a mountain biker because even though you ride mountain bikes a lot, because you're really passionate about road cycling, that somehow disqualifies you from being a mountain biker. Yeah, well, I think less of you now you've said it. Well, um, I'm, I've deliberately kept that knowledge from you for so long. <laughs> I mean, it's interesting because, I mean, I don't ride that much. Mm. But obviously, if someone said to me, are you a mountain biker? I would. I feel it in my bones that mm. I'm a mountain biker. Um, uh, so maybe it's not an amount. It's not a, qu it's not a quantity. Mm. It's, the, it's the, the quality of your riding and, the, and the, what it makes you feel like. I mean, if you feel like a mountain biker, I guess you are one. Yes. But what is it that's making you feel like a mountain biker? Is it the baggy shorts you're wearing or the, or the whatever the trend is, yes. whatever the fashion is? I'm not sure. So here's a question. When you started mountain biking a few summers ago... It was just a few ago. Yeah. <laughs> what was mountain biking then? Well, it was definitely fashion then. It mm. definitely was. I mean, I'm someone who definitely went into mountain biking because it was the fastest growing sport in the world. Everybody was like this new thing called mountain biking and it had lots of weird trends going on lots of fluoro clothing and weird anodized bike parts and stuff like that was all just getting really attractive to the consumer you know so there was a lot of fashion in there oakley glasses lots of oh, yeah. and lots of fashion um, bleeding across from different sports. So there was a certain surfy look element and there was a certain motocrossy elephant. Uh, uh, elephant? Element. There <laughs> was an elephant. elephant. There was Just an elephant. Out. Yeah, that motocrossing <laughs> elephant. Do you remember him? Back in the day, that motocrossing elephant. What was his name? <laughs> Clint. <laughs> Clint, the motocrossing elephant. No. Um, I mean, I, I, I'd say, yeah, it was definitely fashion back then. See, but... But the fashion was backed up by a sport that was really good. Once you got into it, because it looked great, it was good and it delivered. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, you could say it was like the content too. But if mountain biking, I mean, I think you use the word there, consume or consumer. Mm. I'm a consumer, a consumer of mountain biking in probably, I'd say, almost all of its iterations. Yeah. Whether it's consuming the racing, consuming the media, or consuming 
the goods and the experience, you yeah, know, yeah. going to the resorts and, yeah. and riding those trains. Mm. Do you think the fashion, you know, I think a lot of people, not maybe that's not fair, there is a certain element of mountain biking community that thinks it's like the there's elements that are like the galactic empire that are creating fashions. You mm. know, 26 is dead because the man killed it with 29. But I don't really subscribe to that. Do you? Do you think, do you think the fashion is driven? Uh, it's tricky. Because I think there's not generally a Emperor Palpatine or a Darth Vader in mm. terms of a galactic empire, but I think there is a need within the industry to keep reinventing itself yep. with tech stuff that generally we just don't need. But it's all a load of nonsense, really. <laughs> it really is. There's, I mean, there's, you've got to admit, some of it's a lot of nonsense because at the end of the day, you still do exactly the same thing on it that you did years ago yeah. before some of these wheel sizes or brake um, innovations or suspension innovations came in. You still do the same thing. I suppose there's, there is, I think, a really good argument about that in that, you know, with, say, 26, which I think was probably one of the big things people still talk about. Yeah. Um, yeah. Wheel size, because... And we could we didn't need to change. Could have just stayed as it well, was. Well, that's it, because, you know, now it's it kind of made a bit of an arms race in terms of the yeah, tech. <laughs> and then it's leveled out again. The same people are winning. You yeah. know what I mean? And the and the, the experience is largely the same. Well, I mean, what do you think? You think... Twi I think, you know, it's something that with wheels and axle sizes, people get real... Oh, boost, man, it's... Yeah. But listen, we can either have it one of two ways. We can either have the information... The, sorry, no, the innovation is a complete overhaul. Yeah. Like, you know, so they'll be literally go from 26, non-boost, yada, 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 to... Because bikes will want to change and get better. And it can go to something that is almost completely unrecognisable. It has no shared shared specs. Or you can have something that slowly, incrementally changes. And I think that's kind of what it does. And I've I've never really got the frustration of, you know, wheel size, for instance, a great example. If I got a new car tomorrow and I had my current car with a nice set of wheels, I wouldn't go, this is an outrage. This is an absolute out. I can't swap the wheels. <laughs> it's an... Uh, I would. <laughs> but I would. I'd be well annoyed if I just spent £5,000 on a mountain bike yeah. and then the next year that same brand brought out the same mountain bike, but with industry standard changes on it, which now made my one worth less, less interesting. And I've spent a year saving up that money. So in two years, from the beginning of me wanting that bike and starting to save, to the point where that new iteration of the bike come out, I'm the idiot. <laughs> yeah, but I'm the loser. <laughs> and I'm the guy who funded them making the change. No, that's I lost. Fair. But good argument. That's right. No, I, th I think I think that's the way a lot of people do feel. Yeah. But I would say, you know, with things like, you know, tech changes, etc. People people want people want the best. And I think if you had a a bike now, say like you know the twenty nine or twelve a twenty can't speak a twenty nine a trail bike, which is now very prevalent, and you compared it to a twenty six inch one hundred thirty mil bike of a couple of years ago. People would be like, oh my God, this is better. Yeah, I'm not denying it's getting better for sure. But you're saying that as with the luxury of someone who's been in the sport a long time. Like yeah. it's really demoralizing for someone who's been in the sport not very long. No, very and, they, true. and they've very really true. become passionate about it. The sport lives off people like that. Yes. You know, coming in and um and giving it that new regrowth and that new uh new energy and and money yeah and then they really support it with their cash and then they get taken down by they get taken down by an industry standard that did we are yeah. 29 inch wheels i know they're slightly faster mm. and they're slightly rolling s smoother through certain trails yeah it are they any rounder <laughs> <laughs> but no. that's not the point. No, know? they're not any rounder. But what I would say is that... No, answer the question. Are they any rounder, tech man? Uh, yes. No, they're not. <laughs> oh my God. I was like, are they? Are they? Uh, well, if you, do you know what? If you'd said they were then, I'd have believed you. Because I've got... You know so much about tech and I'd have gone, oh, well, right. I was do you know what I would my, say? My bad. I thought they were the same roundness. I would say that they are because the earth is smooth, smoother than a ping pong ball. 
if you scale both both up to the same size, do you yeah. have a ping pong yeah. ball? Yeah, it, it applies to <laughs> bigger wheels. I mean, it's rounder <laughs> in terms of like it depends on your perspective. If you're looking at them from space, yes, that's what I'm thinking. Twenty nine is that's that's the <laughs> angle they should market twenty nine is. But coming back to that, twenty nine inch wheels, rounder from but, space. <laughs> <laughs> to me, I don't like I. People often ask carbon or alloy or twenty nine or twenty seven, and I just. I, you know, I'm someone that I obviously really do love the tech. I'm very invested in it. But I do not care. A good bike is a good bike. Mm-hmm. If it's got 27, if it's got 29, if it's alloy front triangle, alloy rear triangle. To me, in the same way, I don't know what, I don't know what size wheels are on my vehicle at, my, at home, my car. I have no idea. That's a good point. I don't I've know. Just got, I'm just so uninvested in it because I go, the car as a whole does what I want it to do. Yeah. I and mean, I'm more of a fashion victim, right? Because that's say... That's my scarf. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> was that not what you were referring to? <laughs> wow, that was good. It just took me down right then. Um, <laughs> no, I mean, I'm more of a fashion victim because of this scarf and because of if you suddenly said to me, oh, I saw your car that you've got outside in that new version with the yellow wing mirrors... That's when I'd be annoyed. Oh, it's not the wheel size. It's that like suddenly I'm not fashionable. Mm. I'm like, what do you mean? It's come out with yellow wing mirrors. What are you talking about? <laughs> but, like I've got the black wing mirrors. That was the cool wing mirror color. And they're like, now nah, they do them in yellow wing mirrors now. I'm like, man, man, I want, I want, I want to, I want to smash my hand against a wooden table. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not going to, but I would if it was a thicker table. But is that not something like a trend within our society? Then it, you know, consumerism. That's we do want. The latest and greatest. And also, if you did work for a company that creates mountain bikes and your job is to develop mountain bikes, what, are you not going to make them better? Are you just going to go, hold up, lads, take the day off. (laughs) Mountain bikes don't want to get any better today. Like, of course you're going to try and make them better. Yeah, I mean, it's tricky. I used to run my own trials brand, right? So I had my own, uh, and I sort of came up with a very original bike design for a a trials mountain bike um, Mm. and put that out. And it was really different. So somewhat of a, like change in the look of the the bike almost mm-hmm. it was a very strange looking bike um and it did really well and it sort of was right on the curve of like changing what trials bikes look like i don't know, think it that bike particularly changed the look of trials bikes but it was definitely on the trend of them changing um right at the start but that went and because it was a geometry change that went too far for me, mm. and the bikes got longer and longer, and, and this particular look went with that. Um, so there was a point where I like was on the on the like yeah the the trend needs to happen, it needs to change, mm. and then it got to a it's going too far, it's changing. So I think I've got a wavelength I'm happy with, and mm. I think maybe everyone's got that. I've got a wavelength of like yeah okay. I can see why that's happening. Yeah. It, it makes sense. But there, there is a point with, undoubtedly, the change in trials carried on happening and trials bikes are way, way more effective now. Yeah. But they look... Weird. Can I use... I can't use swear words. They look really stupid. Yeah. But I want to use a different word to really. Because they are... But they work incredible. And, 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 and I think there is a point where you're like, all right, you've just changed it too much now. Now, I think that's a really interesting conversation. I want to use an example. People that say, ah, oh, bikes are changing too much, who are perhaps quite resistant to extreme amounts of progression. Like you said, they, mm. they, they see things in an operational window and they perceive it, oh, just nudge towards it. But that's what makes bikes out of date. For instance, you look at Pole, who are, oh. and I always talk about, but I just think whether you like their bikes or not, they're doing it. something cool. Yeah. And I really respect that. And so they're right on the periphery, dragging the industry one way. People yeah. say, look at their bikes and say, they're too long, they're too, the seat tube's too steep, yada, yada, yada. Then they're the same people that would complain that in a year's time that the car they just bought now has yellow wing mirrors. If they went to the extreme, they'd actually protect themselves a bit from mm. it changing. Yeah. But instead, they'll look at the operational window and they'll, you know, go baby steps. Mm. And a bit of me thinks, let's just go absolutely wild. Mm. Let, I, I just <laughs> I love that and mm. it gets me so excited because I think the only way we can find out what is a valid bike design is to go too far and then bring it back yeah but that's expensive for a lot of people and I just it want is. to clarify yes, at this true. point right okay 
is my car available with yellow wing mirrors or not? Because um, it seems like you know something I don't. <laughs> and I want to know. <laughs> um, yeah, I think so. But like what you're saying is just so exp- that's that's going to cost people money. Yeah. And I, hey, look, I'm a bit of a I'm a bit of a whore for it because I love pole. Mm. I think they're an awesome looking yeah. bike, and I buy one. Mm. You know, what I mean, I, I'm not in the habit of buying mine and mountain bikes. I got out of that habit before I even started the sport. <laughs> <laughs> so I I don't tend to do that, but yeah. I'd buy one of those things because they look sick. And I, I, I think also, like, take someone like Neil Donahue, who definitely early on with the long and slack kind of angles was dead against it. Mm. But because of the brands he rides, riding for GMBN, he's got some uh, experience of it. Mm. And he's and now he he's he's not. I don't think he would be like, yeah, let's go longer, let's go slacker. But he would definitely be a bit more like, actually, it's pretty good. Mm. I've got used to it, and he wasn't into it. Yeah, he wasn't into it at all. So he's been pulled along and yeah. and made. You could say pulled along. Pulled along. <laughs> well done. <laughs> he's been pulled along, and he's he's now he's. A, I think I've heard him say that he's a bit more into it. Yeah, I mean, I think the language we use to describe the way we ride bikes. People mm. often say a shorter bike is more nimble, you, mm. you know. But for <laughs> me, I find that a really problematic way of describing it. Because for me, when I ride a bike and I think of the word nimble, I think of traction and being able to move the bike. And so when you have a longer bike, there can often be more traction. Mm. <laughs> so then you feel like you can move the bike more, which is actually counterintuitive. I think... You know, people, I mean, when I started mountain biking, it was like size down, go on a medium. I'm six foot tall. Mm. They'd be like, go on a medium. You'll, you'll be a lot, you know. And now it's, it's. Yeah, go the other way. It's go the other yeah. way. And yeah. people try and wrestle me on an extra large and I'm, I'm absolutely against it. Yeah. Like, I think that you've got to trust the brand to mm. size you. Um, I'd go large. I, I go large. Yeah. 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 I'm large, a, large. I, I think if, if I'm six foot tall and I'm not bam on the middle of a large, something's gone awry. Yeah. If I, if it's on an extra large, like, no. Like, we can't, you know? It's, to me, it's it's the equivalent of being like, right, okay, so the fashion is um, to have, yeah, yeah, you know, your jeans up by your ankles. Mm. I don't know why that is, but apparently it's a fashion. I've been reliably informed. I'll, so just, roll, of, I'll just roll these down. Hang on. <laughs> but, but so instead of, instead of just buying jeans within that fashion, it's like me buying jeans that are 20 inch right waist and not being able to fit them around my waist, but just so I get that part. <laughs> it's like, you know, buy it within the, buy something that fits at least according to the person who's designing it. Because if they're saying it doesn't fit you, <laughs> you know, who knows? You yeah. it's, it's not that easy to outsmart them. I think in regards to, you know, coming back about, you know, spending your hard earned cash on a bike and, I think for me, a really liberating experience was I went to, when I first went to New Zealand, I'd, you know, I've, I've kind of always worked in bike shops and stuff, so I always had quite nice stuff and, you know, and I was buying it, but, you know, mm. you do get um, discounts and stuff working in shops. And I went to new, my first season in New Zealand. It's obviously a place I talk about a lot, but I got absolutely destroyed by the people that didn't even have any, you know, I'd be there with like my Troidy kit, Ba, 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 all matching da, 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 da. the socks match to the helmet which matches the jersey and there'd be some guy in jorts like absolutely yeah. smashing it and go oh and I it basically made me realise it didn't matter no right really mm. um, so what kind of dictates fashion do you think um, well I mean one thing that's definitely dictating how any sport moves now is the social media side of things yep. and the, and media in general, but I suppose the uh, most obvious thing I can think of right now is like Danny, Danny McCaskill's just put out a video called Gymnasium. Yeah. So will we, <laughs> will everyone just be going to gymnasiums on bicycles now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, or, I mean, it, there's that's the daft point. No, of course they won't. Speak for yourself. But, but <laughs> what in that video, Danny does a trick, right, where he throws his bicycle, he ghosts his bicycle at a ramp, yeah. kind of a ramp, it spins in the air, yep. does a flip, and then he catches it again, right? So there's a new trick. No one's ever done it. It's a ghosty bike flip, and he catches it, right? Mm-hmm. I think, because that's cool and trendy right now, there are very good riders out there somewhere ghosting their bikes at ramps and trying to catch them again. 
that's ridiculous. But it's so but true, it's though. Fashion. Because, you know, <laughs> when Bernard Kerr did a thing on his e-bike, it was like Ski Sunday. Yeah. I've seen other people on yeah. my Explore tab on Instagram doing that. Yeah. What? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's crazy. I mean, that that kind of media attention for any kind of trick or look or mm. whatever can really take off. And then suddenly a fashion can happen for no other reason than it was exciting one day, but in two weeks' time could be quite daft. Yeah. Because people throwing... I mean, Danny throws a bike that is pretty much a one-off. Yeah. I mean, you know, Santa Cruz can bust out. They've made the mould, so they can bust them out for him as quick as they like. But they only make them for him. They mm. don't sell them. Um, he's throwing a, you know, one-off, hand-painted, beautiful carbon trials bike that no one else has got. He's throwing it at a wall and catching it again. <laughs> and, like, is, there, is anyone else who hasn't got the resources of Danny Mac doing that? That's a stupid idea. <laughs> can you remember, and speaking of trends on social media, can you remember neck nomination? Where it was a bit, it, someone would say, watch me down this bottle of vodka and yeah. I'm going to nominate you to down a bottle. Yeah. What? And people do it. People yeah, do it. Yeah. Oh, the, 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 the Facebook what, says. Yeah, the ice bucket challenge. Yeah. You know, it's like, I'm going to chuck an ice bucket over my head and then get you to do it. Yeah. And everyone went, okay. Yeah. I heard someone refer to the neck Actually, nomination. Actually, I made my son do that. <laughs> I, I filmed him. <laughs> I heard someone refer to the neck nomination as the Kool-Aid challenge. Just, right. you know what I mean? Like, everyone's yeah. just drinking the Kool-Aid, man. Yeah. Like, yeah. what is going on? Crazy. Um, Crazy. Something about, with Danny McCaskill's video, mm. Red Bull. Yeah. Energy drinks. Oh, yeah. I feel they're, they are, well, they're almost synonymous with action sports now. Yeah. And it's amazing the you do hear some of the sort of contract um, talks, or sorry, of the the clauses within contracts. You know, I've heard of motocross riders getting paid huge amounts of money via one energy drink company not to sign for them but just not to sign for another energy <laughs> drinks company <laughs> because it, right? it, crazy. It, it's it's quite important also i think another very notable story was josh bryceland terminating his mm. sponsorship with monster yeah a very prominent energy drinks company mm. which was so anti-establishment it was very fashionable yeah. Well, now you say that, uh, right? You say that. You say that. It was very fashionable. It was trendy. That's different. Hmm. Fashionable would mean that lots of people did oh, it. Oh, sorry. So you were. How yeah. many? How many pro mountain bikers have you seen follow him in that fashion? I feel we're going to come back to your scarf Z inevitably. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> Man, you know when you regret something, you know, you're like, man, why did I put this scarf on today? Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, so many people, so many people um, loved what Josh did and it was really interesting. But yeah, no, but Laurie Greenland did just sign for Red Bull. He didn't go, no, man, I'm with Josh. Everyone went, good on you, Josh. Good on you. That's more money for a monster for me. <laughs> it wasn't fashionable. It was trendy. <laughs> that's very, very fair. I'm, I'm glad to, uh, to clarify unlike, the distinction. Unlike my scarf, which <laughs> no, it's is great. fashionable. I like, it. I like it. It's very smart. I'm just cold. I'm just cold. <laughs> now, I don't know whether the energy drinks thing, I don't know whether it's basically a really cool media company with an energy drink bolted on. Mm. Because... It just seemed the wrong way around almost. It almost looks like they basically needed something to tie into their concept. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, I mean, if you look at something like Red Bull, there's a famous um, tagline in, in when you work for Red Bull as the can is king, you know, like the, the you know, at all times in every situation. Wow. Um, uh, so what they mean by that is that every time there's an opportunity for the can to star, you know, then then it, it's the right thing to do. Mm. You know, like the can is king. You put it front and centre, logo front and centre, you mm. know. Um, it, it's always it's always on point. Uh, but I think even Red Bull now would openly admit that the media side of their business is as big. And I think they have kind of made that shift, that the media side of their business is as big as the drinks part of their business but you can't deny where they've come from oh yeah and i think monster are the, the same beast mm. sorry pardon the pun but you know it's it's um but it's what they do in the sports that you know 
dictates the the fashion side of things. I mean, it's it's difficult, isn't it? Because it's not a, it can't be a fashion that anyone else can take up mm. because there's just one thing you don't do, and that's paint a sponsor on your helmet that you haven't got. Oh, so, you have seen people. I've seen. I mean, yeah, but don't do you, it. You don't do, do it. not do it. It's <laughs> the it's free. the worst. It's the worst. Um, so you, in that sense, it's not a fashion because you can't really take it up. But it is. Unless you're, if you're a downhill racer and you haven't got a drinks company on your helmet, are you in fashion? Mm. <laughs> mm. But there's Don't a, know. you know, with Monster, you do see a lot of people putting Monster stickers. It has a, a, a brand following. Yeah, Monster but Mon- Monster's helmet. different. You wouldn't do, uh, Monster's different to Red Bull in the sense that you, you can get Monster stickers that mm. could make your helmet look, because it's a very simple design, mm. could make it look Monster helmet-like. But... A mon- what, I, what I'm saying is, you know, there's a there's a a helmet design that 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 is clearly a, a monster sponsored rider helmet, that sort of black with the green stripes, you know, and it's been done properly. And then there's the Red Bull helmet. The only way to get those is to be on point yep. in terms of results and f- fashion. Mm. Um, and and I don't know who's a great rider who hasn't got one of those brands on their helmet, mm. and like Greg Minner. Mm. So is he not fashionable? But when he, don't yeah, know. It's very difficult. I think with um, or has he? Has Greg Minner got? He's got a, Cliff, I believe. Oh, he's got yeah. So Cliff Richard. have tried to Cliff have tried to create a little <laughs> pattern for themselves there, haven't they? Yeah. Um, and but something that's really. It's not. I mean, it it looks cool. I think. I think it looks great. Um, Brett Reader's Cliff as well, isn't he? And Casey Brown. Yeah, yeah. I think um, you know, Red Bull's really interesting. Just just as an example, when we talk about being fashionable, is that I feel a large part of their um, law is being quite anti-establishment, being quite like upstart, and they just do whatever they want. You know what I mean? It's yeah. a very youthful and exuberant brand, but they're becoming so big, mm. they almost are becoming a bit. Part of the establishment, you no, know, they, they Red Bull TV. They they comment on the things, and it's yeah. very interesting. How I wonder how carefully they have to manage those two things by both being sort of reckless and exciting as a brand, mm. and also being incredibly effective and efficient. Yeah, I mean, I think I think it depends on what sport you're viewing them through. You know, in mountain biking, we think they're trying to be reckless and rad, mm. and in other extreme sports, but then you've got to remember they're in tennis true they're not you know they're they're in every sport you know it's it's not that we just see how that's very true i don't think so i mean um monster on the other hand you know they they definitely have got the sort of the badge of honor of like kind of like the crazy people are on Mm. monster the crazier athletes tend to be on monster Mm. it's certainly got a personality type which fits really well but end of day monster is owned by coca-cola it's not it is the establishment so yeah. you know it's kind of a but it's it's interesting how they set the trends and do the trends you know coming back to like you know original point like and and the fashions that they create because things have happened in mountain biking that have just been um so defining in how it looks um maybe brands like that can't really define how it looks because they can only look one way mm. so i mean there was the whole in in the clothing side of fashion and mountain biking there was you know the the breakthrough in the 90s that everyone started wearing baggy motocross type clothes based on fashion you Mm. know dude certainly wasn't based on what made most sense for a sport that was all about going fast do you think it's going the other way now we've seen in recent years Mm. um clothing getting tighter and tighter and especially in downhill racing and there was also those kind of exciting pictures you might have seen floating about on instagram of Mm. the canyon fmd collective i believe the full team name is is in a wind tunnel yeah do you think that that could be then will that influence fashion um well i don't know i was i was when i saw that post so is it tarny seagraves um yeah you know on a downhill bike in a wind tunnel wearing slightly tighter clothes i'm like are they really finding anything out there doing that Mm. i mean that's just nonsense i think i mean unless unless she was trying to work out different pedaling patterns that were more mm. wind effect, more aerodynamic, or I just don't know where that goes other than a really good photo opportunity. Yeah. So was it just marketing? Oh. I think that's just marketing. That's just what would look cool. As You're a on team. a new team. Yeah. 
could we could we go down the marginal gains route of suggesting what we're doing with you? At the end of the day, they've got a really tried and tested downhill bike. They're going to put Tarnie Seagrave on it. That's actually what they're going to do. I mean, and she'll yeah. guess what she'll do? She'll ride down a hill. Yeah, but I will play devil's advocate here. You know, I think that you might only have to do half a day's wind tunnel testing. Yeah, to give you all the data you need. Because I'm, there are probably too many variables in the way that the body moves and stuff. Yeah. Mountain biking compared to something like time yeah, trialing. Yeah. That's just, it's just total nonsense. But if they look at it and they go, the jersey here is like a big... Yeah. I don't know. It's nonsense because we know, because we all basically understand aerodynamics, is like the tighter clothes will be slightly quicker than the baggier ones because they're not catching the air. But the, yes. It's like we know the answer. No, we know that. So but, what's the tightest they're allowed to wear? What, wear them. Yeah. <laughs> But it's okay. Fine, your logic is bulletproof. Bullet <laughs> it's Let's... just, it's just, it's just nonsense. So that is just a. What's interesting though is if Tani Seagrave starts wearing the tightest mountain bike clothes she's allowed to, mm. based on the rules, how much influence that's got over generally the sport becoming a clothes where uh, uh, generally the sport becoming a place where people wear tight clothes as a point as opposed to at one point it was a sport where people wore baggy clothes in terms of downhill racing yeah um i mean obviously there's never been a trend in cross country that was where the baggiest clothes you could <laughs> and nino would still win although you say that what's the um is it F- fumic um from cannondale yes he, he wears started baggies. he started wearing baggy shorts yeah because yeah. i think he i mean there's got to be an argument that over a lap on a cross-country course it makes a difference whether you've got baggy shorts on or not but mm. how, much? how much and maybe just being slightly more comfortable and feeling freer when you're mm. moving on the bike is also got its advantage and it makes up the difference you know with um speaking of fashion and what what leads to the consumer at mm. the end and to just going back to the Tani thing, you know, I think it's whether or not, oh, this is going to be fashionable. Because they might be doing it the other way and they might be going, quite. how can we make something that is as aerodynamic mm. but looks better? It, yeah. it might be looking at it, it backwards. Be. It could be, And yeah. I think that could then lead to more choice for women. Mm, yeah. It wouldn't be the first time I'd looked at something backwards. It has just struck me, actually, how we're talking about fashion in mountain biking and... Mm. Um, I'll, I'll point this at myself, and no offence, but you're implied in it, is that are we the two most fashionable mountain bikers to be talking about this? Um, what, we qualify? We're possibly <laughs> the most... I'm definitely one of the most unfashionable mountain bikers I'm very in our building. Yeah. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this. Maybe we shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> so mm. apologies for that, if you're listening, mm. that we actually even brought it up. But yes, anyway, no. let's continue. <laughs> yeah, did you get... On my first day, I got the three-hour seminar from... Blake and Doddy about hairstyling. Oh, God. Um, you know, it's actually very informative. Yeah. You don't want to listen to Doddy at all. <laughs> and and Blake is almost a different language that he's talking. <laughs> and it's, talking it's one of those languages that you hear and go, I need to learn it. You know, <laughs> it's a little bit like, like I live in English. Wales. I live in Wales. It sounds great. I don't need to learn it. <laughs> and, wh- and whatever Blake is talking... I didn't need to know that. <laughs> so, Martin, are you guilty of following any fashions as unfashionable as how how little we are both pulling them off? Are you guilty? Am I guilty? Start with you. I 100% guilty of following fashions in mountain biking. Give us a sure. good example of something, maybe something you recognise and gone, what well, have I done? I mean, well, 100%. When, when mountain biking was going through its motocross-esque phase in the 90s, I was, uh, a, a, you know, very much part of wanting that look to Mm. take off just simply because at the time all of us in the pro side of mountain biking in terms of trials and downhill the more extreme sides of riding all loved motocross and we all wanted to be motocross stars and we weren't so we decided to try and make our sport look like it nice that's what happened so i definitely (laughs) did that I've definitely had my moments where I've tried to change the trends and hopefully create fashions in my little area of it. And I think when something comes out, I mean, I'm I, like I said, I'm really annoyed by industry standard changes and things like that that mm. that mean the fashion a uh, bike can be fashionable one day and unfashionable another. But I am also, on the other hand, someone who will look at a bike like a pole or whatever and go, 
I want that. So I'll buy into it 100%. You know, so I'm definitely guilty as the, charged. The last, I just want to very quickly touch upon the whole standards thing. And this is the, the mm. last and only, I want to go back into it. You I want think, to agree with me, don't you? I want to say that I was, you know, never like a, I wasn't, I wasn't a pro rider. Yeah. You know, I wasn't given the phone out free bikes. So I actually have a relationship probably more similar to a lot of our viewers. Secondly, I want to say the only time that standards really annoy me is when a company, and I think actually the right word would be bastardized. They try and say 26, instead of just keeping the 26 inch bike good, yeah, or making a 29, or making a 650, they try to say, oh, how can we, if we keep the same bike, but change this link and do this here, then we're going to get a bike that's 650. Mm. The ride is worse than the 26, but at least it's keeping up with the fashion. That yeah. I can't abide. And I, I always call that out. I, I would mm. always, I would never be like, wow, that's great, just because it ticks the wheel size yeah. box. A bike should be good whatever size of the wheel. Yeah, yeah. And that that is just pandering to the most, the, yeah. the lowest level, and yeah. that I've got no time for. Yeah, well, and when that happens, to stay fashionable, people will buy it. Mm. And they're buying something that's maybe not as good as it was before, yeah. or not as good as what it's trying to be, because it hasn't really taken the industry standard and used it for its, like, you know... Quality, uh, you know, the improvement in performance that it's designed to be, mm. it's just been used as a yeah, yeah. We're we're one of the yeah, we're one of the you know quick moving brands that yeah. are doing all this new stuff. I don't believe in golden tickets, and if, like mullet bikes is a good example. Yes, you can make a fantastic bike bike with mixed wheel sizes, mm. but if you've got a bike brand and you're set on two thousand frames, thinking what the hell are we going to do, and you realise that putting a twenty seven five in the bike makes the bike fantastic, mm. I don't believe that. No. because no one part of the bike can be viewed in isolation oh my god the seat yeah. tube angle's already slapped but that's okay because it's got mixed wheel size the head the bottom bracket's too low it's got mixed wheel yeah, size stop yeah. complaining yeah it's just bull crap yeah yeah so you threw it at me so throwing the question straight back at you are you are you guilty of following any fashions i'm in i mean you, you've you can either be delusional and say no but inevitably i have been yeah you've got to have been i you know there have been times where I unashamedly wore open face and goggles. And I'm sorry. If I could go back, I would, but I can't. Wow. <laughs> wow. But you know, I rode I've ridden some bikes that probably Yeah. Like I used to have one of those polygon square one downhill bikes. And everyone told me it was ugly. And everyone told me it looked <laughs> like an e-bike without the motor. And I said, It's I love it. Leave me alone. And I just, you know, mm. didn't care. Yeah, I've not got over the goggles bit. I know, it's a bit of a swallow that. Yeah. Although I have just thought would I look really weird going down the high street with goggles on in my wheelchair? Because I think I could look cool. I mean... Like I said, I don't really create fashions. Yeah, I don't I, really create fashions. I just I don't know what to say. Yeah, the scarf. Back to the scarf. <laughs> yeah. Back to the scarf. Um, so yeah. I think inevitably I am a victim of sometimes trying to keep up the fashion, but I try and be more aware of it now. Yeah. But you know, I a good example of how I'm currently currently in the throes of a fashion crisis is... <laughs> I, and I, I've talked about this weirdly a lot. They've really been a game changer for me. Riding trousers. Oh. I have never worn them before, apart from this winter. Right. So you wear them now? No, and I yeah. love them. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's a bit of a drizzle outside. I couldn't possibly, I couldn't <laughs> possibly wear shorts. Why not? I'm like, oh, quickly dry the trousers and they're on the radiator. It's, you know, it's above freezing. It's absolutely fine to wear shorts. But I'm yeah. like... You know, I literally You've think I'm going to catch my death. Yeah, but why is that? Well, I never had them before. I've never done a winter, winter ride with short. So I guess one of the things. That I guess the, the 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 those new riding trousers. The material has improved so much, mm. hasn't it? It's so light, mm. and so mate. You're preaching to the choir. I, I love mean, them. they are. I mean, they're j they are good. They are good, but they're so, not. It doesn't disable shorts. They're, no, they're not necessary. But they are good. But that's another way we view fashion. I mean, it? put it this way, right? I wear I wear a pair of, uh, when I'm out mountain biking now, I wear a pair of those n very new fashionable downhill trousers that are mm. very, very thin. Mm. They protect you not at all. Not at all, yeah. Um, and I wear them, right? And I can't feel my legs. And even I wear them. <laughs> So, like, what does that say? I mean, I just, I'm just like, well, I've got to have a pair. Yeah, no, you're totally right. Uh, it's madness. Yeah. They're just, black. But, They're black. You can't, from a distance, you can't really tell. But what's crazy. interesting is that 
you know, I suppose one of the laws of the universe is that one thing can't affect another thing when they're both in isolation. So let's look at, as an example, how up in arms some people in the road cycling community were and are about disc brakes on road bikes. Yeah. As if it's going to make their current bike worse. Oh, no. It's like, no, it doesn't. It doesn't change your bike. It doesn't. Some, just because a disc bike brake exists doesn't make your bike crap. Ah, but it does give the person on the disc brake bike a performance advantage over you who has not got the disc brake bike because now they can essentially handle better weather conditions than you, better, worse it's, weather it's conditions. It's the same as 29. If you got a good 26-inch wheel bike, it didn't turn crap the day that 29 came out. But it made you potentially slower than the person on a 29-inch bike. And at the end of the day, it's about racing a lot of time. But- who? So it's this performance involved. You're tech, do- <laughs> you're tech doping. You're tech doping me. I know what you're doing. You tech guys do it all the time. You're tech doping me. Ah, it doesn't change your bike, but I'm quicker. Ah, oh, fine for you. <laughs> Said the guy who gets given bikes. Oh, here we fine go. for you. Yeah, here we go. Oh, and me, actually. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, last question. Actually, penultimate question. I'd like to build them up to knock them down. Ooh. Penultimate question. Who is the biggest fashion victim oh, man. in the sport? Either that you know or that you've maybe spotted at afar. Um, who's a fashion victim in mountain biking? Right, well, I'm going to try and be controversial. Um, so I'm going to think of, think of someone. Yeah, who else wears <laughs> scarves? Uh, I think the biggest fashion victim in mountain biking at the moment is Brendan Fairclough. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Why? He's the biggest fashion victim in mountain biking. Well, um, why not I've said that because he's really popular and I'm just hoping everyone's going, what? (laughs) And I'm like, yeah, I said it. (laughs) Don't get me wrong. He's incredible, right? Mm -hmm. I have, I have said it a few times, um, definitely on GMBN shows at some point that I think he's a world cup downhill win away from saying he's the best rider on the planet. Yeah, because he can cover so many bases. Yeah, but it's the fact that he tries to cover so many bases. He's trying to please everybody. He's a fashion victim. <laughs> yes, Brendan, you heard me. <laughs> I didn't mean it. I was just trying to be controversial. <laughs> what about you? Can you think of oh. a fashion victim in? I, I tell you, who else is a fashion victim in mountain biking? Go on, Nino Scher. He's a fashion victim. Is he a fashion victim? Yeah, he's a fashion victim. That guy. Would you care to expand? Well, he just, like... Keeps on winning, that's fashionable. Keeps winning. Ugh. No, that's my point. Oh. Yeah, he just keeps winning, and it's boring. <laughs> it's boring, Nino. I would like... And i tell you what, I mean that one, because I don't know the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Unless I meet him and he's nice, and then I take it back. Yeah, just uh, rescind it. Yeah. We'll have yeah. to do an apology on uh, yeah, another yeah. podcast. Yeah, I'm, you know, I'm... I'm no, nah, yeah, fair. I'm fine. I'm happy you're happy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What about you? Have you got a fashion victim um, you come to mind? I think... John Tomac. You know, uh, the, the thing I would say fashion Doddy. victim are people... Doddy is a fashion victim. Sorry, just came to me there. Go on. Doddy's a fashion victim. Sorry, carry on. Okay. I think... Who are who fashion victims? I think anyone that... You know, actually, I met a kid at the Forest of Dean mm. who's a... a, a the son of my friend. Wait, I don't think we should pick on any viewers. No, 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 no. And he said... <laughs> and he, he was said, a fashion victim. I want to put videos on YouTube. Yeah. But I don't know if they're going to be any good. And I said, dude, do it. You'll have so much fun. Yeah. And it, it's it's that sort of, you know, notion that everyone's sponsored now and everyone everyone's trying to kind of compete. Whether they're actually sponsored or not, it's kind of fashionable to be sponsored. Yeah. And it's fashionable... But actually, anyone that that detracts from their love of mountain biking, I think is a victim of fashion. And I think if we can get more people into it and show you you don't need to be sponsored to put videos on YouTube and show you having a good time with your mates, Mm. I think that'd be a freer and more expressive place. And I think that sounds good. Yeah, but that doesn't sound like it fits with social media very well. You know, because because people because people you know that's the problem with all of it, isn't it? Is everyone showing their best self, their Mm. best, the best version of their pro life? Mm everyone's showing the best version of their life and full stop and hardly any of it's true yeah <laughs> it's, which is a shame the only people I actually like to see content from are people that you know it's the warts and all yeah not not necessarily I think sometimes you see people that go too far and they want to and I probably fall into myself yeah of you know heightened vulnerability but I'd like people that just you know I've got some friends that they just god love them they just want to ride bikes and they get yeah. loose and they have a laugh. And it's 
just about showing each other. Yeah. You know, as much as as much as the wider world. Yeah. yeah. Um, what was your last question? Because I'm my, getting serious <laughs> guilt on my uh, calling Brendan Fairclough out as a fashion victim with zero evidence. <laughs> <laughs> it's killing me right now. The, does um, is it a case that the more you, mountain biking you do, you realise that actually it doesn't really matter? Or no, is it the other way around? I think it matters. What do you think? <laughs> I'm trying to get a straight not, answer out of you. No, I think... What do I think? Does it matter? Is it a driving force for good or for bad? I think... it. I think it does matter. As mm. much as I think it's annoying, mm. and I think that, like, there are fashions that, you know, I do sort of agree that it's got to happen because Mm. it is what makes the sport great and I do love the advances. So Mm. I sort of think it does matter, but I don't... There's two me's. There's the, you know, the one that supports it and the one that doesn't. And one of them's wearing a scarf and one of them isn't. Oh, wow. And I just don't know which one it is. (laughs) Today, yeah, I'm looking pretty cool. You are looking pretty good. (laughs) It was, I was just, you know, it was because you're looking so good, I thought you need to be taken down a step or two. That's what I thought. Yeah. That's what I thought you were doing. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you very much for listening to the GMBN podcast. Get in the comments below. How do you feel about fashion? Thank you very much, and uh, we'll see you all next time. Let me know about this scarf. <laughs>